Welcome to Sound Test. My name is Brian and this is Now Spinning, a show where we look at records and get to review them as well as talk about record releases. So on this episode, we have a very special record. We have this, which is Lupe Fiasco's Food and Liquor 1 plus 2 in a double album set. So um, this was a record store day exclusive. So I'm really excited to, to talk about this. And as you see, it is still sealed. So I'm going to open up for the first time and we're going to take a look at this album and the packaging and all of that. All right. So with this album, this is actually really special because one, uh, Food and Liquor 1 is kind of hard to find on vinyl. Uh, and if you do find it on vinyl, it is like really expensive. And Food and Liquor 2, the great American rap album, that just never got released on vinyl, period. So it's special for those two reasons that one, an album that's out of print, hard to find, as well as an album that's just never been released on vinyl is now available on vinyl. Um, the other thing is that this was a record store day exclusive. And uh, according to this, there's only 7,000 copies produced. Um, so this is the, and this is in collaboration for the 15th anniversary of food and liquor. So we have 15th anniversary of food and liquor plus food and liquor two available for the first time on vinyl. And it is purple and gold slash silver vinyls, limited edition of 7,000. And this one in particular is number 6,047. So this is sealed. So this may be sacrilegious for a few, but I am going to open this and we're just gonna take a look inside. And there is the record store day symbol. All right, let's open this up. Yes, there we go. All right, so here we go. So um, I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but um, it actually shows the Lupe Fiasco, uh, his logo, his imprint. And it's kind of like on a glossy finish. Um, and it says food and liquor series, which is kind of interesting. Um, and it shows kind of Lupe from that food and liquor two era or the great American rap album era when he was just growing into his dreads. Then on the back with the same font, you have food and liquor as well as track listing for both albums. And as I said, again, this is number 6047 out of the 7000. All right. So we have this here in a double LP. So it's actually uh, both albums have two sides, so it is four vinyls all together. Uh, this set was kind of costly. Uh, it was, I believe, 70 or 80 dollars somewhere around there. Um, but again, it's kind of for the collectability aspect and for the fact that again, you're getting food and liquor too, never been on vinyl and food and liquor one, which if you were to buy that used today, it'll be more than just this double set alone. So let's take a look inside. Okay. So let's, let's take a look inside, try to do this very carefully. All right, so here is Food and Liquor, the original album. Look in the outer, the inner sleeve. Right, so we have both records here. 
and oh my god that is gorgeous but you look at that clear vinyl with purple sprinkles sparkling excuse me splatter that's the right right term purple splatter yeah that is gorgeous take a second look at the other one Same thing clear with the purple splatter. Yeah, that looks really nice. We also have a inner sleeve for food and liquor one. Well, that inner sleeve, the um, The inside where it shows the track listings. And I really like this black and white artwork. And that's kind of seems to be like the theme for a lot of this, just kind of uh, monotone black and white, a little bit of gray in there. Right, and that seems to be it for food and liquor part. So food and liquor, we have these, once again, clear and uh, purple splatter vinyls, which looks really beautiful. So we're gonna move on to food and liquor two, the great American rap album. All right, and we have Food and Liquor 2, the great American rap album. So there is no album cover for this. Essentially, the album cover is just straight black. So they kind of replicated right here. And on the back, you have the track listing. Don't know how well that's gonna actually show up, but um, it is great text on pure black background, which ironically enough is more than they actually give you in the actual album. If you ever bought the actual CD for Food and Liquor 2, it is just a completely black label. Like the back is just all black, album covers all black, the booklet is all black, the album itself, the CD itself is all black. There's like no identifying part parts of that album if you buy the CD. So, um, do we have an inner? Nope, we don't have an inner picture sleeve. And so here is the album itself. Ooh, very nice silver. So Food and Liquor 2 is on silver, is a silver vinyl. Um, they do actually give you the track number, so that's good on that. other one yeah nice silver vinyl so I I, I, I do believe that kind of makes a little bit more sense um, uh, the food liquor 2 was a little bit more dark uh, than Food and Liquor 1. Uh, did deal with heavy handed themes here and there. Um, but, you know, sound wise, it is a very different sound and is a definitely a much more mature sound for Lupe. So let's talk a little bit about these albums in this next section. All right, so let's talk a little bit about these albums and kind of like their impact and kind of my, you know, personal feelings on them. So we have first Food and Liquor One. Uh, this was Lupe Fiasco's debut album. And if you haven't checked it on my channel already, I did a whole retrospective on it. 
and my retrospectives those are scripted um, I listen to the albums a lot formulate my ideas um, I go through the lyrics and all things like that so um, I already did a whole retrospective on this album but to kind of summarize some points of that uh, this was like a super super strong start for Lupe in his career um, one of the things that I kind of talked a lot about was how it was a sound that was different for hip hop at the time, but it also spoke to a subset of nerd culture, skateboard culture. Um, it was truly uh, an example of alternative hip hop because it focused on the lyricism, the production, uh, Lupe's style. It was so different from anything else at the time. And he was really embracing this nerd culture. He was really embracing, you know, being different you know even looking at this you know looking at this this back cover like it's it's very punk rocker-esque you know uh and and you know what, what was also interesting about food and liquor was you know there was some of the typical hip-hop trappings you know uh lupe was very fresh you know he he did dress very well he did have chains and things like that and that's expensive stuff but he still kept the nerd side to his his productions to his music to his style overall overall style as well um there's a lot of great hits on here uh just looking on this back cover um hurt me soul that is my favorite lupe fiasco song just period it's just so much lyricism in there so much great parts in there uh you got of course um daydreaming with jill scott that's a fantastic track you got kick push which was his breakout single uh that's a classic you have the cool which was just a prequel to literally the cool album um you got sunshine a real love sunshine uh instrumental instrumental which where he was really focusing on that kind of like rock aspect of it um the, the, the emperor soundtrack is great american terrorist is great where he's kind of taking into these you know political things and you know it is a very solid album top to bottom um you know and it's it does kind of sound of that time frame uh that 2006 era but again it's it's still a standout album from lupe definitely um up there of his top albums so let's talk a little bit about the great american rap album all right, so we have the Great American Rap Album, or Food and Liquor 2. And um, there's a lot to like about this album. Let me say this, there's a lot to love about this album. Um, but there's also some kind of weird trappings here and there. So this album did come after uh, Lasers, which I also did a retrospective on. Um, and that was my longest retrospective up to this point. But, um, this actually came out just a year after lasers and lasers was a very polarizing uh album and a lot of the kind of negative trappings that a lot of people associate with lasers were corrected in here um so one this album starts off super strong um you have strange Fu um, fruition um which is once again, pairing Lupe with soundtrack. And I love that combination of Lupe and soundtrack as the producer and strange fruition. Um, it is obviously kind of like sampling the idea of Billie Holiday's strange fruit, which in itself was about lynching of black people. And he kind of talks about that just metaphorically. And he's talking about a lot of about, you know, inequalities. He's talking a lot about uh like home situations and and the ghetto and you know not necessarily a physical lynching but more of a moral lynching and it's such a dense song it's a lot going on there but it is fantastic is that is also one of my favorite lupe songs it's strange fruition then that goes to idol roses which kind of still sounds in that you know same style as the um, kind of political kind of heavy-handed very conscious um but again it's just there's a lot to pick out out of that song 
Um, I think the hook is a little on the nose, um, but it is fantastic song. Then that goes to Around My Way, uh, Freedom Ain't Free. And he got a kind of a bit of a controversy when this, this that song came out. But again, that is a super solid song. It's just one of the better tracks on this album. Um, again, he's, he's talking about all these different things. Um, like I, I love where he's like talking about how we're, we're fighting wars just to get more uh, more dinosaurs for the Cadillac because it's you know he's just using that as an extended metaphor for oil and how we're going to all these third world countries to you know rid them from the oil just to power our cars and like he the the metaphors he use is really nice the music video is great too where he's kind of showing like the contradictory nature of him driving in this super expensive car but yet he's still talking about all these political things all these things that's going on all these issues in america and then turns around and that car ends up being a rental so you know it's, it's kind of like that idea that you may be looking like you're you're good or you may be looking like you got your stuff together you got expensive this expensive that but in reality you're not really living that way and it's kind of like just the front and then he had like this mixture of these cartoons in there as well and it I, I, I can't believe how many times I listened to that song you know when that first came out before this album even came out when that single came out I watched that video and listened to it like constantly just trying to pick everything apart um we have Audubon um Audubon Ballroom great another solid track um and then I kind of feel like the album goes all over the place uh, you have bitch bad which okay um, I get the point of the song definitely not my favorite off of the album um, Lamborghini Angels decent track as well um, and then it kind of falls off from there we got put them up heart donor uh, how dare you battle scars Braveheart and just that huge chunk of the middle part of the album not a big fan of um, it doesn't get as egregious as like lasers, <laughs> but um, it is definitely a weak part of the album. Um, does more of the commercial side, that whole middle part. Um, and they're not bad tracks. They're again, they're they're. I don't skip them as much as I do with some tracks and lasers, but you know, not a big fan of Heart Donor. How dare you? Um, put them up is fine. Uh, don't care too much for Braveheart. Uh, Battle Scars, that was like his kind of like crossover hit. Um, that one was a big hit at the time. Again, not my favorite. Uh, but then it goes to Form Follows Function, which is a great track. Um, concept wise, is a very simple track, um, but it's just bars upon bars upon bars on Lupe. And that track is great. Um, a lot of great lyricism in there. Um, then you have Cold War, Unforgivable Youth. Again, pretty decent, pretty fine tracks. And then um, Hood Now, which is also a favorite of mine's off of this track. And it says it as an outro, but you know, it's just it's kind of just its own track by itself. And um, yeah, that I, I really like um, Hood Now. I think it is a good ending to this album. And um, I just love the idea of him just going back through history and seeing like all the contributions that black people made to American society and just society in general. And, you know, using the idea of hood now, it's like, we'll take something that was bad. We turn it to, we make it good. So it's hood now, you know, again, that's Lupe embracing the hood, embracing, you know, his origins where he kind of came from. So, um, yeah, when it comes to Food and Liquor 2, the great American rap album. Um, again, this is just a quick general uh, overview, overview of it. But yeah, it's a super strong beginning, kind of falters in that middle um, and has an OK ending. But God, that those first few tracks, man, they they are just great. Uh, they are definitely the ones I whenever I listen back to this album, those are the ones I constantly you know, go back and listen to. But um, oh, as an overall product, it is still a good album. Um, it's just my personal um, ideals. Don't 
quite agree with the name of calling it food and liquor two, um, because it, it doesn't sound like food and liquor one. Um, it doesn't even have the familiar trappings of food and liquor one. Um, this one, this album is a very much more mature Lupe. It is very much more, you know, grounded in reality. Um, and I say that only because, you know, Food and Liquor One did tell a lot of stories. Um, it did have a lot of, you know, supernatural things going on, uh, you know, especially when you hear things like um, the the um, uh, Daydream with um, Jill Scott, you know, things like that. And, you know, he did tell stories with like the cool and he say, she say, you know, stuff like that. Um, this is not more, this is not really on storytelling. This is just more based on what is truly going on in society, things that he, he, he's commentating on. And part of that is kind of a leftover from what lasers did. And I, I think lasers was good in that, um, aspect of kind of going through some of, you know, touching on some of those aspects or more serious topics. And that's, you know, what food and liquor Two did. Um, but sound again, sound wise, it's, it's a much more darker composition. Um, the production is a lot simpler in a lot of cases. Um, food and liquor one, there's a lot going on in, in the productions, uh, more in per particular things like real or just might be okay. Or I gotcha. It is a lot going on in those songs production wise. And, you know, uh, style wise lupe again was completely different um again not disparaging food and liquor too at all i do like the album and just me personally i just never felt i understood the ideal of the uh it being considered a sequel to food and liquor um and you could probably argue that the cool was more of a sequel to food and liquor um even though that was its own thing as well but yeah, um, that's my thoughts on this. Um, so yeah, again, very, very beautiful packaging. You have food and liquor too with the silver vinyls. Let's take a look at that again. Yeah. So food and liquor too with the silver vinyls and Food and Liquor 1 with the clear vinyls and that gorgeous uh, purple splatter. So yeah, um, that was these two albums. And once again, the packaging that puts them all together. So yeah, um, for me, very much worth the purchase. Um, I am a huge Lupe Fiasco fan. So um, to have these on vinyl, which is super great, um, especially again, Food and Liquor 2, since it's never been on uh, vinyl. And I kind of feel like sometimes Food and Liquor 2 becomes kind of a uh, forgotten album. <laughs> from um, Lupe. I don't think a lot of people really talk about uh, the great American rap album as much as, uh, you know, the cool and, and food liquor one. And I think more people talk about uh, much more people talk about lasers for how good or not good um, it is, or, you know, just how different it is, but yeah. So hope you guys like this. Um, if you did, or if you want me to check out any other albums or records, I have a big stack of them. So, um, I'll be doing this periodically throughout the channel, but Hey, if you enjoyed it, Hey, comment, like do all those YouTube things. It just helps the algorithm. All right. My name is Brian. This has been sound test and catch y'all on the next video.